Can you imagine making billions through franchising? Billion dollars, yes. Billions were made by a handful of people who didn't just start a business, they built empires through franchising. But what set these billionaires apart isn't just their wealth, it's the strategies they use to get there. A combination of calculated risk, brand loyalty, and community impact. Five visionary entrepreneurs, Greg Flynn, Jack Cohen, John Marriott, William Heineke and Shaquille O'Neal did exactly that. But they didn't just reach the top by accident. They used five powerful strategies to turn their franchises into billion dollar dynasties. Get ready because we're not just talking about making money here. We're talking about building legacies and transforming entire industries. And I'm going to tell you exactly how they all did it. One of the ways these billionaires found success through franchising was through strategic diversification. One of the best examples of this approach is Greg Flynn. Greg didn't just stick to one franchise. Instead, he built an empire by acquiring Applebee's, Panera Bread, Arby's, and Taco Bell. Why? He knew that relying on just one brand could be risky, especially if that brand hit a rough patch or if customers' trends shifted. By diversifying, Greg wasn't just creating more income streams, he was also building resilience. With each new brand, he gained different customer demographics, broadened his operational experience, and could weather the market shifts more comfortably. Greg isn't alone in taking this approach. Take Jack Cohen, for instance. When Jack brought KFC to Australia, he didn't stop there. He also introduced Hungry Jacks, the Australian version of Burger King, strategically targeting a different market segment. Jack understood that diversifying within the food industry would let him capture more of the market share and meet different consumer demands. By tapping into both the fried chicken and burger market, he created a safety net for his portfolio. When people wanted fried chicken, they'd go to his KFC locations. When they craved burgers, Hungry Jack was there on the go. This way, his business wasn't tied to just one type of product or consumer trend. So why does this work so well? Diversification and franchising operates a lot like a financial portfolio. When you have your investments in different sectors, you're less vulnerable to single market downturns. If fast food casual dining is struggling, maybe drive throughs are thriving. If the US economy slows down, perhaps the Australian market is stable. Greg Flynn and Jack Cohen proved that by expanding into multiple brands and regions, you're building a a buffer that protects your overall wealth. These two were very smart men, but their strategy didn't stop there. They also had very strong commitment to brand standard and consistency. Greg Flynn, for example, while owning thousands of Applebee's, Panera's, Arby's, and Taco Bell locations, didn't just sit back and let each location operate on its own. He implemented strict operational standards, ensuring that each franchise met the brand's promise to customers. His approach was all about precision. For Flynn, a sandwich at Panera in Los Angeles should taste the same as a sandwich in Chicago. He invested in extensive training, quality control, and operational audits to ensure brand consistency across all locations. Knowing that brand loyalty depends on dependability. John Marriott Jr. did the same. As he grew the Marriott hotels into the international powerhouse, John understood that the key to his success wasn't just opening up more hotels. It was ensuring each Marriott offered a consistent, high-quality experience. For Marriott, a hotel in Tokyo had the same feel and comfortability as a room in New York. This commitment to brand standards made Marriott a global globally trusted name. For most people, when they're traveling, they look for hotels they're familiar with. Being able to create such a global brand loyalty is what drove his success. Travelers began to expect a certain level of luxury and service no matter where they stayed in the world, which set Marriott apart from their competitors. Now, why did John Marriott and Greg Flynn obsess over standards because consistency builds trust and trust keeps customers coming back. In a franchise, trust is golden. Customers return because they know exactly what to expect. When they see that logo, they don't just think a product, they think of reliable experience. And if the franchisee cuts corners, it doesn't just affect that one location, it can hurt the entire brand. Maintaining high standards across locations is what transformed a franchise into a household name. These franchise billionaires built their fortunes on these simple, principles, consistency. They understood that a brand isn't just a logo, it's a promise to the customers. By upholding brand standards, they didn't just make money, they built a reputation that made their franchise indispensable in the eyes of the public. Whether it's a hotel room, 
a burger, or a sandwich, customers remember the quality. And for franchise owners, that quality translates directly into profitability. The third strategy that these billionaires implemented was risk-taking in new markets. When Jack Cohen bought KFC to Australia, fast food wasn't as embedded in the culture as it was in the US. So it was a huge risk, but Jack saw an opportunity. He knew Australians would love fried chicken just as much as anyone else. Once KFC was a hit, he introduced Hungry Jacks, the Australian version of Burger King. By stepping into unfamiliar market and doubling down, Jack transformed fast food in Australia, creating a new dining trend and ranking in massive profits. His risk paid off, making him one of Australia's wealthiest franchise moguls. Then there was William Heineke, who saw untapped potential in Asia. Heineke didn't just bring franchises over and expect them to succeed. He took American brands like Sizzler, you guys remember that? And Swinson's and adapted them to fit the Asian market. This was very risky. He had to walk a fine line between staying true to the brand while making it relevant for a new audience. But William's adaptability allowed him to carve out a unique niche, creating loyal customer base that saw these franchises as a locally adapted favorite. Today, Minor International, his company, dominates across Asia and Heineke's wealth is a testament to his willingness to take bold risk in unfamiliar territories. These were huge risks by both Jack and William. Why did they do it? They recognized that new markets offer fresh opportunities, places where brands could stand out and even shape cultural trends. But stepping into a new market isn't just about opening up a location there. It's about understanding the local culture and being willing to adapt. Jack and William didn't just open up franchises. They studied their markets, listened to their customers, and found ways to make each brand feel like it belonged there. Now, entering new markets isn't without its challenges. Jack Cohen had to create brand recognition for KFC from scratch in Australia, while William Heineke had to convince skeptical Asian consumers that American dining concepts were worth trying. But here's the upside. Once they succeeded, they had an entire market practically to themselves. In the early days, there was little competition and their brands became almost synonymous with fast foods and casual dining in these regions. They weren't just franchise owners, they were market leaders setting the tone for an entire industry. What we should learn from Jack and William's story is that calculated risk in new markets can be transformative. It's not about jumping in blindly, it's about seeing potential where others don't, taking the time to understand the culture and adapting without losing the brand's core identity. Risk-taking in new markets isn't just about expansion, it's about pioneering, building something that didn't exist there before and making it thrive. And as I mentioned, you can't just drop a brand into a new country and expect it to thrive. You need adaptability and localization. The fourth strategy that these billionaires incorporated. Imagine bringing a brand across the world and realizing that if you don't adapt, you'll fail. You can't just copy and paste a business in a new culture. You have to reimagine it. These franchisors became billionaires, not because they simply expanded into new places, but because they adapted their brands to fit local landscape. While William Henneke saw potential in Asia appetite for American brands, he quickly realized that he couldn't just offer the exact same menus from the US. He had to localize, offer dishes and flavors that resonated with Asian tastes. For instance, he added menu items inspired by local cuisine and adjusted service styles to better fit cultural preferences. This adaptability helped his restaurants feel less like foreign imports and more like a part of the local dining scene. Today, Heineke's franchises aren't just popular, they're iconic across Asia. Then there's Jack Cohen, who bought Burger King to Australia, but couldn't use the same name due to trademark issues. He rebranded it as Hungry Jacks, but he didn't just stop at just changing the name. He adapted the menu and marketing to resonate with Australians. He added local ingredients, seasonal offerings, and made tweaks to the brand's presentation. Today, Australians see Hungry Jack as a distinctly local brand, even though it's an international franchise at heart. Cohen's willingness to adapt made his franchise a national favorite, and Hungry Jack's became Australia's answer to Burger King. So why did these franchisers go through all this effort to adapt? Why not just stick to the original brand? The answer is simple. It builds trust. In each of these cases, franchise owners found that by localizing, they weren't just offering a product. They were building a relationship with customers. They showed respect for local culture and that created loyalty. When customers feel like a brand understands and respect their culture, they're more likely to return to feel a sense of connection and to share their experiences with others. The lesson here is that adaptability isn't just a skill. It's a competitive advantage. For these franchisees, 
localizing their offerings wasn't just a nice addition. It was essential to their success. By going the extra mile to understand and honor the preferences of their new market, they didn't just build a business, they created franchises that felt like they belonged. This adaptability set them apart from the competitors who have stuck rigidly to a one-size-fit-all approach. The last strategy these billionaire franchisers had in common was a commitment to community and a focus on legacy building. Building a business that not only makes money, but also becomes a vital part of the community where people know the name, the logo, and what it stands for. For some of the most successful franchise owners, creating a legacy meant more than profits. It meant giving back and making a difference in the lives of customers. One of the best examples of this is Shaq. I had the chance to meet Shaq while working at Goldman Sachs. And while I expected a legend in basketball, I met someone deeply committed to giving back. Shaq's approach to business isn't just about profits. It's about impact. He doesn't choose franchises randomly. He picks brands he believes can add real value to communities. For example, with Papa John's, he didn't just invest. He joined the board to ensure that the brand embraced inclusivity, and community focus. He even created the Shakaroni Pizza, which directs a portion of sales to charity. Shaq's approach to franchising is personal. When he opened a Krispy Kreme location, he didn't just open a store, he revitalized an area, creating jobs and drawing people together. And beyond his business moves, he is known for simple acts like giving shoes to kids or hosting community events, making sure that his success contributes directly to others' lives. Meeting him showed me firsthand how franchise owners can leave a legacy beyond their earnings. They can build a brand that genuinely lifts communities and create opportunities for the next generation. Another great example is Greg Flynn. The Flynn Restaurant Group employs tens of thousands of people across Applebee's, Panera, Taco Bell, and Arby's. But for Flynn, it's not just about numbers. His focus was on creating quality jobs and offering advancement opportunities and supporting local economies. By building businesses that provide stable, filling jobs, he's impacted communities in a real way. For Greg, Every restaurant isn't just a revenue source. It's a chance to uplift local workers and bring stability to families. This community-oriented mindset has become a hallmark of the Flynn Restaurant Group. So why do people like Shaq and Flynn go to such lengths to give back? Because focusing on community creates brand loyalty that no marketing campaign can buy. When a franchise becomes a part of people's lives through jobs, community service, or local support, it's no longer just a business. Customers feel an emotional connection. They don't just buy a product, they support a company that's actively contributing to their community. This loyalty turns customers into advocates who return again and again, not just because of the product, but because of the brand's purpose and their impact. Community focus also builds a legacy that lasts. Shaquille O'Neal's dedication to giving back is evident in every franchise he invests in. From Papa John's to Krispy Kreme's, his initiatives like creating the Shakaroni pizza to support charitable causes are a lasting reminder of his values, inspiring people far beyond his business. Similarly, Greg Flynn's commitment to job creations have forged strong ties with communities across the nation. Flynn's restaurants are more than just a place to eat. They're seen as dependable sources of employment and local support. Both Shaq and Flynn demonstrates how focus on community creates a legacy of positive change that people remember and respect going forward far beyond financial success. Community focus isn't just a feel-good aspect. It's a strategic advantage. Shaq and Flynn shows that by giving back. You're not just creating goodwill, you're building a strong, loyal customer base and creating a brand that stands out. Their franchises are proof that when you focus on community, you build wealth, but you also create a legacy that resonates far beyond the bottom line. These incredible stories show that franchising isn't just about making money. It's about building legacies that impact communities and stand the test of time. Each of these entrepreneurs, Shaq, Greg, Jack, John, and William, prove that with the right strategies, a franchise can become so much more than just a business. It can create a lasting value. So what do you guys think? Are you inspired to explore franchising? What questions do you have about getting started or growing a franchise? Drop your questions in the comments below and I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and share it with others. Until next time.